Kind thanks go to Brilliant for sponsoring today's episode. SpaceX super heavy without legs and now the Starship 2? Is Elon Musk serious about this? What's next in Boca Chica and how do competitors keep up with the fast-paced SpaceX innovation train? What about it? Go for launch. Or go for launch. Let's light this candle. Ignition sequence start. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates Twice a week I report about what's happening at SpaceX in Boca Chica, Texas. And twice a week there is more noteworthy information surfacing. SpaceX is moving at a speed never seen before in the space industry. Let's start this one with some beautiful footage from Mary for nasaspaceflight.com showing the orbital launch site. As seen on the last episode, there are quite a few things still missing here. A second orbital launch mount, a second landing pad, a second fuel farm, just to name a few. The first orbital launch mount fuel farm is progressing nicely. First tanks have already been placed on concrete foundations. Operation panels are being installed. A few more weeks and it will be ready to support launches. The orbital launch mount itself is not seeing any love right now. The white metal ring, presumed to be the orbital launch table for the mount, seems to be largely done though and is much more massive than the suborbital test stands we're used to. A railing has been attached on top and welding work seems to be done. SpaceX workers dug a rather deep hole close to the orbital launch mount and lowered steel tubes into it. A little later, Philip Bottin posted these pictures on Twitter. Follow him at BottinPhilip if you're interested in more. It's kind of hard to say from this perspective if they positioned them in a circle or in two lines. Either way, this is meant to hold a lot of weight up. The site is getting ready to support very large flight hardware rather soon. And the very large flight hardware is taking shape rapidly too. This is booster number one inside the high bay or actually one of two already completed half stacks. To be able to test a super heavy booster, SpaceX will need more Raptor engines. Right now, the plan seems to be to have four engines on initial test flights, ramp the number up to 20 in a second step and then go for 28 Raptor engines on the full build. In the beginning, the boosters will likely have legs on first test flights, similar to what a Starship prototype has right now, but eventually SpaceX wants to catch them with the launch tower. This of course is just our idea of what it might look like and not SpaceX's official plan. And we have proof now that this is not just a wild idea put out there on Twitter by Elon Musk. SpaceX is officially hiring a vehicle systems software engineer and one of the tasks listed is developing operations and associated automation to support a super heavy launch catch tower. So they are really going to try to make it happen. And it doesn't just end there either. Musk tweeted on Tuesday that they might just catch the Starship with the launch tower as well, same as the booster. He elaborated further saying that they talked about it internally. Could just have it land on a big net or a bouncy castle. Lacks dignity, but it works. What? Okay, so Earth-based Starship variants could have no legs at all? Again, on the last episode I showed you some renders from Eric X Space depicting how the landing legs seen on the recent Dear Moon Starship renders could work. This shows though that SpaceX seems to really be struggling with the leg design. It must be a tough task to come up with a reliable landing leg for a Starship. Of course a lunar Starship or a Mars landing Starship would need proper legs. There's no tower waiting on Mars to catch the first colonists. So at least for this scenario, SpaceX will have to have a working leg concept to go with. Catch towers won't be on Mars for a long time. That's quite work intensive infrastructure to build and maintain. Nonetheless, SpaceX is progressing further. Some puzzle pieces will come later than others and right now the small legs should in theory be enough for a soft Starship landing. One aspect of the prototyping program SpaceX definitely seems to be getting better and better at is Raptor engine production. This is Raptor Engine 59 arriving on site. Right now there are almost daily engine deliveries to the production site in Boca Chica, Texas and this is very important for the development progress. Here's serial number 58 for your viewing pleasure. Engines keep coming in day by day and so future test flights won't have to suffer Raptor shortage anytime soon. Much land, wear a box. And here's the reason why the constant supply is needed. This is what's left when a starship craters. Of course nothing here can be reused in any way besides data collection and analysis. SpaceX is burning through engines fast. 
Musk has also recently given an explanation for what went wrong with Starship No. 10. Engine was low on thrust due probably to partial helium ingestion from fuel header tank. Impact of 10 meters per second, crushed legs and part of skirt. Multiple fixes in work for Starship 11. So the helium pressurization system introduced with Starship number 9 to fix the header tank pressure problem Starship number 8 was suffering caused the trouble on Starship 10. The irony. That doesn't keep SpaceX from celebrating though and rightfully so. This is footage taken by Mary on March 2nd and it shows a big firework above the SpaceX Starship construction site. Even though Starship 10 didn't survive the explosion after landing, the Boca Chica crew has all the reasons for celebration. They celebrated another year of great work. As said in the beginning, the amount of progress being made here is stunning to say the least. SpaceX is building our future in space and if successful, the Starship will change a lot of things forever. At this point, the question can be raised what the other launch providers are doing to keep up with SpaceX's incredible speed. Let's see what they're up to. The Y family needs your support. Give the video a like, subscribe and share it with your friends on Twitter or Facebook to show the YouTube algorithm that you appreciate the content. Gain access to our Discord server where you can meet me and the rest of the team or get a completely ad-free release of each and every episode provided just for members. Or do you know about the Y warehouse? Shop for your next Starship shirt and look as awesome as you feel. Links can be found in the description. You rock! Honestly, I wouldn't want to have to compete with SpaceX at this point, but it's in the human nature to always try and improve, keep up and challenge the state of art. This is Launch Complex 36 at Kennedy Space Center. Blue Origin has been working here for six years now, preparing it for their next big thing. New Glenn. On September 15th of 2015, they announced they'd repurposed the historic launch site for future heavy lift launches. That's about the same time that SpaceX started working on their South Texas launch site. And by repurpose, I mean tear down the old launch complex and build a completely new one. Literally everything here is being changed in the process. A completely new pad, new launch support structures, lightning protection, a vehicle access tower that supports human spaceflight and the world's tallest water tower. At slightly above 100 meters of height and with a capacity of releasing 3.4 million liters of water in just 22 seconds, this is something special for Team Water Tower. The cryo storage area is almost done as well, ready to support New Glenn launches with 7 BE4 engines firing at full thrust. New Glenn's first stage will be powered by liquid methane and liquid oxygen and the upper stage engines will run on liquid hydrogen. The pad needs a complex fuel farm to support the rocket. Blue Origin also gave a first look inside the integration facility. Roughly 165 meters long, it is capable of housing up to three new Glenn rockets at the same time. Inside those yellow boxes on the floor, the vehicle erectors will be sitting with the rocket on top. This is where it all begins and then the rocket is off on the road to space, leading up the ramp directly to the pad. Blue Origin has recently announced that a first New Glenn launch is delayed and will now take place one year later than initially planned in Q4 of 2022. According to an official statement, this is due to the fact that Blue Origin was not picked for Department of Defense launch contracts, which in return gives them more time to work on their first prototypes. Next up, we have Rocket Lab and their Neutron rocket. The team from New Zealand, always managing to surprise everyone. Just a few days ago, they did it again after Peter Beck stood to his words and ate the hat. We're building a bigger rocket. To be precise, an 8-ton class launch vehicle which puts it into the medium lift category. Much larger than the Electron, Rocket Lab's current launch vehicle. And now, a few days after the announcement, more and more solid information is surfacing. This small animation released by Rocket Lab only a few days ago shows the engine configuration. It will have four large engines, not five or seven as depicted earlier. And it's now explicitly stating 1.5 tons of payload capacity to Venus. I had an interview with Peter Beck last spring. Let's listen in for a second as to what he had to say back then. You know, there's, there's, lots, of, there's lots of stuff bubbling at Rocket Lab. Um, and generally we don't talk about it until we've done it. Oh, you can but, make an exception um, now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff bubbling. But one of my personal objectives is, um, is to get to Venus. There's a lot of attraction with Mars. And I understand why there's a lot of attraction to Mars. Mars is cool. 
But fundamentally, Mars is cool because a human can leave a footprint on the surface of Mars. I guess I've got bigger questions. I've got bigger questions of the origin of the universe. Um, and, you know, Venus, I, I've, I've always had a soft space for, for, for Venus for a number of reasons. He's got bigger questions and now he's building a bigger rocket. What a coincidence, right? Isn't it a nice position to be in to have a personal goal of finding life on Venus? Peter Beck, you rock. Venus is now thought to have been very Earth-like in its beginnings. Life that could have formed there might have retreated into the upper atmosphere, where conditions would be suitable for life until today. Originally, the plan for Peter's private mission to Venus was to equip a Rocket Lab photon satellite with several small probes and carry it into orbit with an electron rocket. Then send it to Venus and release the probes into the atmosphere. With Neutron now explicitly stating the payload mass to Venus, the plans might have changed. 1.5 tons would give Rocket Lab a lot more weight to play with for the mission. Built as a spacecraft platform, Photon is another of those genius moves by Rocket Lab. It's basically an empty satellite, bringing everything needed to function like propulsion, power and data connection, but no payload. Companies can tell Rocket Lab what their satellite is supposed to do and Rocket Lab builds the rest. Photon is rather small though, and so it would limit the Venus mission. Is Neutron the new ticket for Beck's Venus exploration? Let's hope so. Neutron would be a huge step up. What do you think is the best way to learn something? Lectures? Memorizing formulas? Doing odd numbered exercises from a textbook? Now I could show you a bunch of research that shows what the best methods for learning are, but let's be honest, we all know what's the best way to learn something new. You have to love doing it. You learn best while doing and solving in real time. Jump right into solving problems and be coached bit by bit until, before you even realize it, you've learned a new subject in STEM. You won't need to memorize long messy formulas and endless facts, just pick a course you're interested in and get started. Brilliant has something for everybody. Whether you want to start at the basics of math, science and computer science, or dive into cutting edge topics like cryptocurrency or quantum computing. I use Brilliant for my own research. If you'd like to join me and a community of 8 million learners and educators today, click the link in the description down below or visit brilliant.org slash whataboutit. Today's supporter shoutout goes to Henry Scott, Holger Meissner, Costa Rica Flyers, Dave Rickard, Eric Beavers, Phantoms Byron, Andre Fortin and many others. You rock! Without you and all the other supporters, What About It wouldn't be the same. Thank you for your support, enjoy today's ad-free release and remember to join us on our Y Discord server. I am looking forward to thanking you in person. Today's team shoutout goes to Alex Potvin, my former editor. His talent and dedication has lifted the show to a new level and his relentless efforts of keeping those deadlines even if it meant putting in some extra hours will never be forgotten. Thank you Alex from the whole team for all the help, info and love you put into What About It. Let's never lose sight of each other, you rock. My name is Felix and I am your host. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am your host. All right. Tone it down a little bit. To Prototab, Prototab, the Prototab. The private side of Felix Schlack. It's the Proto of the tabs. Okay, adjust the desk. I can, you think we can do that? <laughs> some puzzle pieces, some puzzle pizzas. Pizzas. It's very important for the development. <laughs> okay. Collection and, 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 and. <laughs> multiple, multiple fixes. <laughs> to compete with Space Egg at Space Egg. Space Egg. 3.4, yeah. <laughs> Space Egg and the prod. Prod. And the prod. Uh, I'm goofy today. <laughs> Engines run, will run for 2022. Will run. Space Egg's innovation train. Almost. <laughs> and the Space Egg.